cutting through. And will we see another Welshman victorious? The Prince of Wales, Richie Burnett. Look at him. Former Lakeside World Champion, a legend of the game. But I tell you what, he is up against a phenomenally talented young man from the Netherlands, Geert Nenchez, who has one of the most gorgeous throwing actions in this sport. Welcome along to any viewers who are joining us on YouTube and Facebook. Just giving you a little taste of PDC TV's coverage of Stage 2 today and tomorrow here at the Labrooks UK Open. Of course, we have plenty of proto action the super series as well in the coming weeks i'm dan dawson paul nicholson former oh, players yeah. champion alongside me which way do you see this one going nico gotta have ninches as the favorite you feel with a little bit of form behind him after coming through q school but you just never know with richie 60. and that's why people love to watch him and even after watching richie Burnett for the last 26 27 years Still got that little bit of a buzz when he's around. He's a great character, a fantastic person to be around if you need a smile. But he's looking a little bit weathered these days, and I'll be interested to see what he can do on the dartboard. Yeah, well, he went to Q School, couldn't win his way back on the tour, unlike Hirt, who got the job done. And you said, I've gone now, is he still growing? He, he, he's like bamboo. I think if you if you stare hard enough, you can see him growing as you watch. Yeah, I I don't know whether it's just the camera angle, but I have been around here for a couple of years. I think he's still growing. And he's just like everybody from that part of the world. At least a foot taller than me. Yeah. Well... He's a very talented player. In all seriousness, you know, some of the, the younger players, we've seen it with Rusty Jake uh, here, obviously. But particularly some of the guys on the development tour, as Richie Burnett puts in the first 180. 55. A bit of a growth spurt can completely throw you off your game, can't it? It definitely did that for a few young players who were very good at a certain height. But then as they got taller, they got to change their approach to the game. Well, it's Justin all muscle Justin memory, isn't it? Yeah, so Justin Van Ter was a perfect example of that. Treble 18 required. Can't get it. And then Ches will have a look at the 92. 98. Tidy, 98. I think is how we would put it. Well, then Ches has options from 92. Does he fancy the 60? A lot more people are doing that now as opposed to the 25 route. It is a gamble. But you have to back yourself sometimes. And Richie, I'm sure, will back himself for double four. For a breaker throw. Work his way in from there. And there we go. Not much of a help, that first one. But Richie Burnett managing to break throw in the opening leg. 17 data will do it. 1-0 to the Prince of Wales. Not the only Prince of Wales we're seeing in action this weekend. Because young Louis Williams who I believe came through his opening round. You'll be seeing him on this board in a couple of games' time, uh, taking on Scott Mitchell. He's now adopted that moniker with Richie's blessing. I'm still not on board with that because I think there's only one Prince of Wales, and that is Richie Burnett. Hey, look, we've already had the Viking on stage, uh, and that's not Andy Forden. Yeah, that's true. And there's some bloke who's world number one and world champion who, well... I'm not sure Alan Warrener was that keen on the nickname being appropriated at first. He's come round to the idea now. I think there's a there's enough words out there and enough nicknames for you to find your own. I, I don't know how I'd feel about someone using mine. I don't think anybody wants it, Paul. Oh, that's that's all right then. <laughs> Absolutely fine by me. <laughs> but here's one for you and for everybody who is tuning in via Facebook and YouTube and of course our PDC TV channel. Do you know what Richie Burnett's favourite poem is? I don't. It's by Private Baldrick. And it goes From like Black this. Adder. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. 99. And so on and so on. So it's Richie Burnett's favourite poem. Well, yeah, fair enough. I'm, I can understand that. If you see Richie at any point this week and just say those words to him, he will absolutely bend over creased with laughter. Well, there we go. That's... 
Something to test out. I mean, none of you can. It's behind closed doors event. What can I do? Were it not, all eight boards in the same room, this would be a fan's paradise. Sorry to rub it in. Easy We've one. talked about young players and people from other parts of the draw having opportunities. I think in the next leg, we'll come back to the other opportunities that are apparent. Well, it's a bullseye, is it? Oh, oh I love all that. That's a show of confidence from the tall lad. And that is a 170 out. We've had the nine data from Sebastian Bielecki. We've had the 170 out from Nentjes, and <laughs> we're only just getting started. But cast your mind back to the early days of the UK Open. It wasn't just about the young kids coming through and the opportunity for someone like Dieter Hedman to produce the first win against a man on network television. But think back to Shane Burgess, who had a renaissance by getting to the final of this event. What's to say we can't have a renaissance this week where Burnett potentially makes the final? Well, there were famously different runners up every year for many many years at the UK Open until Peter Wright came along and bust that trend but the open draw the large field it does lend itself to surprise runs from players and <laughs> I mean that was balletic from Richie Burnett normally the back leg goes but it's rare that all four limbs go in different directions from Richie Burnett, and I think that's what we saw with that throw. He's the Rudolf Nuriev of darts. It is, it is very, very special. Like throwing an octopus out of a window. I think Sid would have been proud of that one. Well, just say what you see. But oh, it's like catchphrase now. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's it's a good answer, but it's not right. It's certainly not right for Richie Burnett at the minute. He's 10 points behind on the averages to this young Dutchman who's... I mean, he's not... He doesn't look like he's doing anything spectacular, but he's just being very functional. Left on tops in that first leg. 12 darts in the 170 out second leg. 76 left here after four visits to the board. I mean, if he carries on at this rate, he's going to be difficult to beat. Options, Treble would have left double four, but he chose to go single for tops. But this is very, very doable. He has the option of the 18s. He's blocked out. Can he hit the top left corner? He's just telling something that's flying to leave him alone. Well, why not look at the 16s there? If, if you've blocked a big portion of it... <laughs> And he goes and hits it with the next dart. How ironic. Double ten, and you will not find any left-hander that doesn't like double ten. He is one of the better left-handers in the world. And another left-hander that a lot of people fancy for this week is James Wade, who has won this tournament previously. 97. Beat you along the way back in 2011. Grr. Mm. This is Richie Burnett's 14th appearance at the UK Open. His first one, actually, for three years. Didn't play last year or the year before. And yet Richie's never never made it beyond the last 16, which is a strange one, isn't it? Yeah, that's a bit of a curious one. Certain people have a certain affiliation with this event. And when I think of the UK Open, I do tend to think of Dennis Ovens. Three-time semi-finalist. Yeah, mm. and those... Awful shirts. Can't get them anymore because BHS is out of business. <laughs> They'll come back around. Look, you'll find you'll find the Denny Sovens wearing some charity shop somewhere, and the students will be wearing it. He'll come back. Don't worry. just ask Nico Kurtz for one of his shirts. Right, well, look, hey, there you go. Fashion, it's cyclical, and Nico Kurtz is bringing back the ovens look. You know, sooner or later, you'll see some clown running around in a Hawaiian shirt. Uh, and then there'll be some idiot walking on in shades, sitting down on the stage, picking arguments with all the other players. Ruby It'll all John happen Rodriguez again. is already doing it. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. But cool. no, not, no, 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 not again. Not again. Richie Burnett. Oh, really? I was going to go catchphrase again there and say, does the middle solve the riddle? 
well, he doesn't in this attempt. Because well, he's just stuck it in the big 10 to leave tops. He's too clever for his own good. Mind you, look what Gert's left. Oh, he doesn't get a go at it. Very good stuff from Richie Bennett. Hitting back. That's his best leg of the match. Boy, that was a pretty tops, wasn't it? Right in the middle. Lovely angle of entry that hasn't really changed for Bennett his entire career. He hasn't fiddled around with trying to get the darts to land flat or any other way. He just trusts the way he throws the dart. And I remember as a kid trying to mimic his throw for years because I thought it was a thing of beauty. 60. There's a somewhat old school look to his equipment as well with the yellow stem and the, the old school Richie Burnett flight. He, he knows what works and when something's not going well, it's not the kit. It's the thing between the ears. Well, Michael van Gerwen's been saying exactly that. In the days leading up to this event, he did not have the most successful Super Series, the first Pro Tour events of the year. By his own ridiculous standards, obviously, a lot of other players would have been quite happy with the amount of several thousand pounds he picked up in prize money. But for Michael van Gerwen, that isn't enough. And he comes to the UK Open this year as the defending champion, having not won a title this year. It's what happened last year. Hadn't won a title up until the UK Open. But he won it in spectacular fashion last year. 110 averages for the last three games, a nine data on the way, a phenomenal final with Gerwin Price. But can he repeat the trick? Because right now, there's nothing to suggest that he's in that sort of form. It'll be fascinating to see what MVG turns up. Geert Nenchez has left himself a bogey number there. I'll be fascinated to see who he gets first because that's the charm of this event. You want to see who they can get and they can get anybody. Well, look, if it, whether you're Gerwin Price, Michael Van Gerwen, Peter Wright, whoever, if you get drawn against Johnny Clayton in your first round game this evening, or fourth round game rather, then you're going to have a, a real tough, or Joe Cullen, Double 18, that's a lovely dart from Richie Burnett. 98. Couldn't follow it up with a double. He knew that was a big chance after that absolute worldy of a second dart. Didn't even graze the blocker, but now it's Nenches who gets the shot at the middle. Oh, he's mustered on the ball. 170 out and a 124. And he's 3-2 up. I am really enjoying this game. <laughs> I'm not sure Richie Burnett is. <laughs> <laughs> Richie Burnett, who has, what, 35 years' experience in the game. He's seen his opponent take out a 170 to 124 to win two of his three legs. And it's like he's never seen this sort of thing before. Box office is that man still to this day. In person, he's box office, no matter how much time you spend with him. But as a viewer of darts, you just can't get enough of this guy. He's still fabulously talented, but his reactions, well, he's up there with Mervyn King in that department. Well, the winner of this will be on the main stage up against the phenomenally exciting young talent Keen Barry and whatever combination we get either we've got two of the most exciting young players in the world on the main stage broadcast worldwide in Nenchez versus Keen Barry or we've got a clash of generations between Richie Burnett a former world champion from back in the 90s and arguably there was a spell where Richie Burnett was the best player on planet Earth I know that Phil Taylor would have had something to say about that but I think it was probably between those two at the time unquestionably against Keen Barry who's a, a double world champion in youth codes and really has taken to senior PDC darts like a duck to water oh he can't <laughs> miss the just bullseye just play on the bullseye absolute soft tip madness this from Gern Enches he's playing like Paul Lim yeah just literally just 150 a visit you average 150 all game <laughs> bull 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 easy one has he missed it yet? I'm not sure he has. 51 51 ball. All right, we'll, oh go, well. The, we'll go the conventional way then, here. He's done it again! <laughs> <laughs> this is absolutely unreal. He's going to go for it again now, isn't he? 
Oh, oh he's missed it. Okay. Still a good visit, but Burnett might go bull. Decides it's got to be double 18, double top, or two double 19s. Conventional. And was it the right route? I don't think so, because I can't visualize Nentes not winning. Oh, Ooh. that's not what he is after. Things have changed. Okay, 23. Could go three double 10. Yep. Whoa, well, it's his own fault. He should have had two darts at double. He only got the one at double 10. And as good as he usually is on double 10, if you only get one dart, anybody can miss one dart. Burnett does not miss tops. He's pinned it first dart the last two times of asking. We've got a level game once more at three apiece. You're right, Dan. He should have gone 51 51 bull. <laughs> this looks pretty useful. And that makes him forget about that previous visit. This game is all as good as the last one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching Bradley Brooks in the next game. Someone who is into the second year of his tour privileges and has to do very well in 2021 to avoid a Kirk. Oh my. Hey Nanchez. Back to back 180s to leave 141. And if Richie Burnett was incredulous that Hayton Enches had taken out a couple of bullseye finishes to win legs, what is he going to look like if this 141 goes? There's the one. Wait, oh. what he should have done is go the manly route. 51 tops bull. You know, yeah, anything that involves the bullseye in a nine data. Immediate respect. Seen Michael Van Gerwen do that. Did that on the Euro Tour, I think. Yeah, he went 51 bull tops, I think. Hmm. That was rather useful. 20 for tops, then. Yeah, very nicely done. 11 data. And if he can do that sort of business on his own throw the next couple of times that he's got the darts, then this will be game over jostling for position in this game it's just so good to watch you are being treated to a proper darts match here and it could come down to the last leg and the man with the throw in that leg is Nentius another game we've got coming up on this board for you later this afternoon is Callan Rids against Ross Smith. I think that's the headliner on board two this afternoon because two very good players go head to head and of course Rids won last week. Yeah, Callum Rids. We were mentioning earlier on about the challenge tour which is what Richie Burnett will be playing on, has been playing on for a while, a second tier system if you like in PDC darts. Well, Callum Rids is a guy who won on the challenge tour before stepping up to the PDC tour and now has one on that tour as Richie Burnett leaves himself 36 after a stunning opening salvo in this leg. Still got it, hasn't he? If there was a crowd here, they'd be singing, he's still got it. Double nine. You could split this. 20. I think that's a very sensible play. He knows where Nenches is positioned and he doesn't want to come back with three darts of double nine. That is old school pointing at the temple I know what to do here and he's got multiple visits for double eight well the bizarre thing there Hayton Enches he's gone for the maximum he probably should have gone for the bull because 25 would have left to finish and he was going to hit the bull anyway so but it matters not because Richie Burnett has pinned that double eight for a fabulous leg oh they've, they've found another gear these two this is superb. Well, he kicked off back-to-back -back maximums his last leg on throw. And I said if he keeps on doing that for the rest of the game, he wins. It doesn't matter what Richie Burnett does. Well, right now they're immersed in this game. <laughs> and so am I. Nentes giving it a little bit after his 180. This is now best of three. Can we just change the format and make this best of 19? It has been that good. Uh, the, the problem is, if Richie Burnett gets any more animated when he's throwing, I, I'm worried his head might come off. 
it's that that was a little bit of a snap but it's usually the last dart where it really goes there we go <laughs> tends to get a little bit more animated towards the end of a match and a visit like you say Dan and that beautiful smooth throw of Nenches just doesn't break down so you get the feeling that with his position not just on the score sheet there and of course with the throw and the potential last leg it's more about what Nenches does but that is a really good score harver there from Burnett and he's put himself in position to break but Nenches is going to be on something very makeable we could be on double 14 not quite but this is an, such a vital moment. The next 40 seconds of this game could be the most important. Got to squeeze it in the middle somehow when he's found oh. the worst possible option. It'd have been better off if it fell out the board. Uh, Genuinely. Double ten. Two fives. It's a big miss, and you're right, Dan. Burnett is still shaking his head because he'd much rather that one fell out of the board. He would have been on a two-darter. This is a three-darter. Can he find two double tops, or will he go conventional? It was the right choice. And he does the right thing not going for tops with dart three, but you're right, the last 40 seconds have robbed Burnett. They have, but only... If Gert gets the job done, and he does, and it's feisty, this. Here, Nenches, he's not afraid to celebrate, and Richie Burnett is... I mean, look, he, he always wears his heart on his sleeve, but he's already had a shout at the board. He's prowling around like a caged animal. Again, he, I, I don't know... Part of it, he seemed absolutely baffled that Gert Nenches has played as well as he has in certain sections. Part of it is obviously frustration in himself. And I think part of it, he just thinks he's had bad luck. I mean, that, we say, the most important section of the match, and then he has the worst bit of luck in the match with that deflected one. Well, maybe he just needed a few extra seconds just to gather himself and come down a bit before that visit. It obviously worked. There is a, a thing in sports psychology where they say your life and your performances are all on a train platform. You're going to see lots of trains going by and you don't have to get on every train and some of those trains are anger and frustration what you've got to do is let it go let it go by and i think that's exactly what richie did there the train was in the station for a while but he let it go well interesting and i mentioned that to kirk bevins who love that pdc referee countdown champion avid train spotter I think and forfeit darts referee now. Forfeit darts referee. You check that out on the PDC social media channels if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook. But you might be checking out a last leg decider here because Burnett is in pole position to hold his throw and force Kurt Nenches to serve this one out. We saw a breaker throw in the first leg, a breaker throw in the next leg. It has been holds of throw all the way through the match after that. In fact, Richie has only had one dart to break since those opening couple of legs so he's going to have to try and force an opportunity in the very last leg assuming that he takes us there over the next couple of visits which is looking likely he's at 140 again and he does not want to leave 99 and he's not going to he's got options from here he could go trouble 16 if he wishes got to throw high very safe and very well executed tops when he returns for leg 10 to take us all the way for the second consecutive match. Ooh, bit of pressure. Leaves him a two data. Will he get a look at the 90 or does Richie close this out? He's been pretty good on tops. Yeah, and that continues. So a strong leg from Richie Burnett. We are going the distance for the second game running. We saw Jim Williams survive a match darts and the Welshman booked his place in round two. Will he be joined by his countryman Richie Burnett? For that to happen, he has to break the young Dutchman. And that visit makes it more likely it could happen. Oh, it's going to be an edgy leg, isn't it? Both, you can see, are just a little bit anxious. 
in this last leg decider. And it's not free flowing for both. They're going to hope for troubles. 95. It's got, there's going to be an attempt at the bullseye for the match from here and Enches, isn't there? It's written. It is written. He's taken out two bullseye finishes. He's hit bull almost every single time that he's gone for it. Often, well, not, including twice in a visit. Is he going to get a dart at the bullseye for the match? Because Richie Burnett is breathing down his neck. And another one in there leaves 167, which he would finish on the bullseye. And Gert Nenches pumps his fist. It's his fourth 180. He's down to a finish first. He couldn't possibly do that, could he? I, I'm just fascinated. Does he go for it? Richie's not going to be on a finish. If he goes 60-57, does he go for it? The smart money says no, but I genuinely don't know. I'd say no. But then again, the 170 was hit. And he's decided not oh. to go this time. An old head on young shoulders. What a fabulous last leg from Kiet Nenches. 180, 127. Five consecutive darts in the treble 20, and he has knocked the stuffing out of Richie Burnett. And that is the towel being thrown in by the former champion of the world because Geert Nenches, when it's really mattered, on his own throw, has been too good. Double 10 to seal it. And there it is. Superb stuff from the young Dutchman. He ends the Prince of Wales hopes and he acknowledges he was beaten by the better man, but there was not very much in it. Geert Nenches is through to round two. You will see him on the main stage here at the Labrooks UK Open up against Keen Barry. And what a fascinating clash of exciting young talent that is.